Hey guys, it's Matt with BallCards.com and today I'm going to teach you how to ship cards. Coming up next. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Before we get into today's tutorial, I want to tell you about the contest I'm running for this Ozzy Albies bobblehead. I just did a video explaining the giveaway for this Ozzy Albies bobblehead. I'll leave a card up there that links to the video. Also, I'll put it in the description below where you can go and enter. All you got to do is comment on that video, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, uh, follow a few simple steps, and you'll be on your way to winning this bobblehead. Now, let's get to the tutorial. All right, so we're going to get into the tutorial, but before we do, just make sure that you go down there and click the subscribe button. Hit that like button already. You know you want to. It's free to do. It only takes like three seconds and it means a lot to me. But without further ado, we're going to get right into this. So I bought a card off eBay, um, and actually I was thinking about doing this video for a while and getting this package in the mail basically had every pet peeve almost that i have about buying off ebay and people shipping cards and it really is not that hard but somehow people just don't get it i don't know it's because they're ignorant they don't know or they're just lazy a combination of those things or they just think ah it'll get there i'm not worried about it um well you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. This time it got here. I'm not sure if it was damaged by the mail or if it was damaged by the way that uh, the eBayer packed it. But anyway, I'm going to show you the auction and then the eBay username, show you what he charged me for shipping. And then we're going to get right into how you should be shipping your cards, or at least how I do it, to make sure that my customers not only get their cards safely, but they're happy with their purchases and it protects you as a seller. So let's get into it. So here is the auction that I won for this card. And as you can see, it's a Grayson Janista from 2019 um, Broman Chrome Mega Boxes. It's the Mojo Autograph. Not an expensive card, but um, I did have problems with this transaction. The first thing I noticed is you can see that there was no tracking available. To me, this means that he didn't use eBay shipping program um and that there wasn't going to be track tracking on the package which at uh, the price you see that i paid 347 for the actual card and then 374 for shipping is more than adequate to pay for tracking on this card for that amount of pa uh, packaging i expect to have a bubble mailer um, a properly sized top loader a team bag and ship well and that's not what i got but uh anyway this is the card that I bought. That's what I paid for shipping. Um, it did say it's a USPS first class package, which I have to say that's what it was. But um, here is the guy's name, just in case you guys want to avoid him if he's going to continue to ship like this. But anyway, I'll get back into it and show you how the card arrived. So as you can see, I wasn't too happy about paying $3.47 shipping, uh, especially when I get it like this so this guy only paid a dollar fifteen for shipping no tracking no tracking whatsoever um, he put it in a it's a one card put it in a huge bubble mailer I'm not that upset about that um, because you know maybe that's all he had available uh, at least it's a bubble mailer and not like a PWE but the fact that he paid made me pay three dollars and forty seven cents sh shipping and then use the cheapest available option from the postal service to mail this one kind of gets on my nerves but what was inside is what really gets on my nerves so um it's in a penny sleeve that's great the problem is is that it's in a top loader that is way too big for this card um that card can just move and bounce around in there and matter of fact, it bounced around a little too much. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but that bottom left corner is definitely dinged. And it might have something to do with this card being able to freely move around inside this top loader. The worst of all on this is that he used packaging tape to tape the top loader semi-closed. Um, this does a couple things. The first thing that it does is it ruins the top loader. Um, you cannot get this tape residue off of these top loaders easily. 
and um, actually there is another option that is much more desirable but I'm going to go ahead and get it out there but you cannot get this tape residue off of these top loaders and I mean basically this top loader is garbage I'll use it uh, to ship another card in but um, I'm not going to reuse the tape just because it makes it difficult to get into the card as well um, there's a very high potential for further damaging the card trying to cut uh, this I don't want my customers dealing with that. So I'm just gonna get into what you need To po properly package a card and ship it to your customer and it's pretty easy So first off you need your card. So we're just gonna reuse this card um, This was a Grayson Janista Mojo autograph from uh, the Bowman mega boxes. Uh, it's an Atlanta Braves prospect. So saw it, it was fairly cheap wanted to add it to my collection. That's fine. So it's already in a sleeve, but if you haven't already, you need to get some card sleeves. Every single card that you sell should be in a sleeve, um, no matter what. Um, it helps protect the surface of the card. Um, it helps it when it goes into a protective case, like a top loader. I don't recommend shipping in one touches, which are the magnetic holders. And the reason why is the same reason for not shipping uh, in these oversized top loaders, because it can move around and get damaged. So use an appropriately sized top loader um, this one fits this card just fine that penny sleeve is going to protect it once it goes into the top loader and that card is in there securely it's set it's not going to move around and to further reinforce that what i would recommend is some painting tape this blue tape is available at any store you can get this even at the simplest grocery stores but it's designed to go onto walls and other surfaces so that when you're painting, you can make a, um, a border where you don't paint over that area and then pull it off easily and it doesn't leave any residue. Well, guess what? It does the same thing for your cars. So pull off a little piece, take it to the top, pinch the top closed, and voila, this card is now in this top loader. It's not gonna move around. The top loader will be salvageable when your buyer gets it and also when they get it it's easily removed with no residue none whatsoever so just a preferred way to do a little tip and trick of the industry if you don't know and that's the way to go so the next thing that i do is i want to put this in a team bag now these say graded card sleeves um, and they are a little bit bigger I you prefer using these because I do sell some graded cards but they work just fine the same as a team bag for your cards and what this does is it prevents that card from uh, moisture damage it also prevents it from further moving around in your envelope and it's just a good clean way to protect the card so the card is gonna go in here but before I do that I need to reinforce this so that it doesn't bend and what I do is I use buffer cards. These are just spare cards that I have laying around. Um, maybe I have too many of them, or maybe they're just commons that I don't keep. And I just put these on the outside of the card, uh, maybe two or three on each side, and then I'll actually use some more packing, or some more of this blue tape to secure them to the front of the card. And again, because there is no residue, you can safely put this actually on the cards now you don't want to put it on like a, a really heavy paper based card like a heritage card because it will it will uh, remove some of the ink or maybe even tear the paper of that but for like regular cards or like for this method um, it works great but what this does is just further reinforce this card for shipping so that it doesn't get damaged if you don't have other cards or you don't want to do that you can use the dummy cards that come, the really thick white cards that come in packs. Or if you don't have any of those, you can actually use index cards, the same exact way that you're using these. And then once you do that, you can seal your team bag and your cards are ready to go in the envelope. So make sure that you have an appropriate size bubble mailer. And this one is a 000 uh, size and it fits cards perfectly so just slip these down in there uh, if you have a packing slip or something along those lines go ahead and put that in there pull your tab seal it shut and then what i do is i'll take the label um, 
Sometimes I have stickers, right now I don't, but I'll take the, the shipping label that I printed off of eBay or PayPal and actually attach it over this flap and then tape it shut with packing tape. And what this does is it kind of gives you like a tamper-proof seal so that if somebody messes with it, you'll know. Um, and usually what people do is they'll either cut along the top or cut along the bottom uh, to get their card out. And that way um, kind of discourages the postal workers from messing with it. Anybody that comes across with it, well, I got to do too much to get into that. Um, and it helps make sure that your customer gets their card safely. So that is how to ship your cards in a nutshell. Now there is another method of shipping your cards and that is for a plain white envelope. Basically you're gonna do the same exact thing except we're not gonna use as many cards. Um, I usually put those, this plain white envelope shipping in something called a card saver which is this soft flexible one. And the reason why is because those cards usually go through um, a machine at the post office and a hard rigid top loader can actually mess that machine up uh, and make your card get damaged so that little soft sleeve does that you also want to put a few cards in there on either side just to make sure that it doesn't bend make sure that you write do not bend on your envelope and that's basically it so without further ado that's how to ship your cards i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please drop a like go down there and hit subscribe leave a comment tell me what you think about our shipping process and we'd love to hear from you if you're opening old baseball cards please remember do not eat the gum we'll see you next time bye